international thing. <laughs> the <laughs> first, the first European. The first European on our yeah. podcast. The Portuguese have landed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, the Jesuits. Uh, also, yeah, Rishab, our we had another guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was three of us normally, four of us, beside uh, Sanjay. Uh, he has started Gov Gov Pass from. Uh, where is he? New York. New York. Oh, he's doing it there. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. I thought he was in Texas, I know. Texas, New York, he's okay, pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, so you're that's diversifying. Yeah, oh, so nice. that's awesome. Turn that shit up! 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 Turn that shit Uh, episode uh, 119, right? Yep. Uh, we have Luis Not Home. Not home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lou. <laughs> uh, uh, one of a uh, good friend of ours, and uh, Lou is, even though she might look Nepali a little bit. But she's from Portugal, right? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, okay? And uh, she is currently been around uh, Nepal, Kathmandu, Nepal, just doing a thing. And yeah, thanks for coming, Lou. And <laughs> it was kind of random of us to ask you, but you went with the flow. I think it's cool. Appreciate it. And yeah, t- uh, tell us something about yourself just off the bat. L- like okay sorry yeah. let's just start with uh you seem like like a spiritual kind of person <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> we're all spiritual people right but like uh, you're diving deeper into it mm-hmm. with your studies and uh i mean we're all spiritual people but we're not master you know what i'm saying so you're trying to study and go deeper and uh yes uh, could you say something along yeah those of course lines? First, I really agree with you that everyone is spiritual and spirituality like can be defined in different ways. And I think it's it's not like it's obviously something you study, but it's a way of life. It's a way of like appreciating life and appreciating yourself and like, you know, learning from everything around you. That's spirituality. Like it's not like I'm a spiritual person or I'm not a spiritual person. It's like. Am I living in the present and shit like that? Like, yeah, that's spiritual, you know? Then even if someone doesn't call themselves spiritual, living in the present and appreciating life as it is, that's already spirituality, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't have to put a label on that. But yeah, I am diving deeper. Uh, What do you mean by that? Are you studying? Yeah, I'm studying. I'm doing a master's uh, in transpersonal psychology psychology and applied spirituality. Damn, what is it? Yeah. What does that mean? It's personal. <laughs> I don't even know what it <laughs> means just yet. No, like uh, it's a new field, not very new, but it's relatively new uh, field of psychology. And it deals with um, like going beyond yourself. Like psychology has a lot to do with how mental health works, how your inner mechanisms work. And transpersonal means going beyond what what you are and going beyond your ego and going beyond that completely so your relationship to the universe your relationship to your dreams your relationship to to your feelings and everything you know it's transpersonal psychology is still trying to define itself so it's really hard for me to define it how did you discover it? anything that that's not personal is transpersonal kitty what <laughs> Anything that's I not the p- that's not personal, uh-huh. oh. and you are you can have a spiritual bond with it. <laughs> like you can have a spiritual I bond so. with it, like, or you can look at it through a you know yeah. t- telescope. I mean, whatever. No, for sure, because uh, I guess your whole existence is based on yourself. It's your personal situation, and the transpersonal goes beyond that and looks at everyone not just you as the actor of your life, you know, as a protagonist of your own movie. Mm. It goes beyond who you think you are and the character that you that you make up for yourself, you know, 
and goes really deep into understanding of how consciousness evolves and how 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 your feelings evolve and how you know we we deal with life completely yeah are you studying it online yeah i'm doing online so i found out about it because i was giving a workshop uh i sometimes give workshops used to in portugal um workshops like on emotional intelligence so this was e like a heart-based e workshop huh? eq right Oh. Emotional quotient. quotient. Yeah. Sorry. What is that? So that's that's like a metric to calculate your emotional intelligence. Really? Supposedly. EQ? Yeah. Like IQ, EQ. Like really? IQ is for intelligence, right? So emotional. Yeah, of course, of EQ. course. So I need to do that. Is there like tests online and stuff? Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Have yeah. you done it? And what's the other? No, I haven't done no, it. I, we were taught that in school. But I mean that it's not it's not like a test score. for everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah, even I when you say intelligence, you know. When you say intelligence you get a number. Wow, it's damn weird that a number describes. But in a way like how can you measure like emotional intelligence that's feeling, you know, mm -hmm. that's how you perceive things and that's feeling. I have a really hard time sometimes like in my studies also reading about all these models that are trying to understand feeling. How can you like rationally understand a feeling do you get what i mean models yeah like models to like model of evolution this is how oh, okay. humans evolve and trying to like reduce humans into one small thing when when hmm. actually feelings are completely you know they're intangible how can yeah. you place that into a test do you get what i mean yeah but <coughs> a lot of people feel a lot of things these days <laughs> <you know? laughs> like What's what are you feeling these days <laughs> nothing actually <laughs> no seriously speaking my goal in life is always speaking about like spirituality emotional quotient and all that stuff my goal is always wanting to be blank like zoned out interesting zoned out to the point that i'm zoned in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> Dude, that's totally. exa exactly, exactly yeah. Like yeah. she got it, man. That's why you're not the fucking master <laughs> in the study field. Bro. I guess I have to study. <laughs> I am no master. Well. I'm no master. I'm doing Psychology. a master. Yeah, you're on your I way. I'm not a master, bro. No, you're on your way. Bro, you're like, on your way. Being a master of under understanding like the universe, that's some crazy shit. I See, don't know that's if the you right can answer. That. That's the right <laughs> answer. If she would have been like, I'm the master, then I would be like, Nah, no, you're not. But no. like, that was like a test question to see where her ego is at. No. Is at the right EQ. spot. Her <laughs> EQ. Her EQ. That's, 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 that's the EQ. That's the EQ, <laughs> man. Your EQ is really high, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, I really understand. <laughs> so it's based <laughs> off of one question. <laughs> that's it. No, but you know, I also uh, when I came to Nepal, I you know. In Portugal, you don't have gurus, for example. Gurus. Gurus. You oh. don't have gurus. That doesn't exist. But wasn't Saint Francis Xavier a guru in his own way? It's a saint. I guess there's like another way to to describe a guru. It's an, just another name. Mm. But I feel like people here are more easily prone to find a guru and to follow the guru. Do you get what I mean? Like. In Portugal, it's more Catholicism, so people go to church and it's Jesus. It's not necessarily. No, I found the priest a too, right? I mean, like you're taking, con giving confessions and stuff, and all like you're blindly trusting this person. Yes, to a point. but it's not necessarily one priest. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know enough. I'm not. I'm, oh. I'm don't practice. I'm not Christian. Mm -hmm. But oh, you weren't ever a, into a Christian family. Uh, my family was always very open. The mm -hmm. background is Christian. Okay. Obviously, we live Being in Lisbon. In yeah. yeah. We used to go to funerals and 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 weddings. That's it, you know. But like, I guess being Christian is more like a way of, like, in its nectar, it's like a way of being. You know, it's like being nice and being being kind and being compassionate. I guess in that way, yeah. I'm I come from a Christian background, but not from the religious part. But yeah, what I was saying is that. Coming here, like I obviously wanted to learn more about uh, Buddhism. That's why I came to Nepal to be a, to live in a monastery, um, and I also wanted to learn about Hinduism. So want to learn about a bit about everything. It's so fascinating, you know, mm -hmm. how people connect to the universe and to themselves through all these rituals, and um, and this thing of like people calling themselves a guru. This is how I kind of read who I wanted to learn from and who I didn't, you know? Hmm. Like, 
sometimes people are given this name by their students, but sometimes they give themselves the name. Like I've reached this this point. Yeah. And for me, it kind of loses, the person kind of loses a, a bit of my respect. I don't know why it's just like, you don't call yourself a master. You know, you you keep it humble and you're always learning. You don't, like it's really hard to master something. You are, you are always learning, you know? So, mm. yeah. <laughs> Damn. About that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so you're on your way to understanding Hinduism and Buddhism. I also, sorry. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, could it also be uh, like you want to know something that is a little exotic, and that's with the sense of like Orientalism types, like you want to uh, learn. A hundred percent. Like because. For us, being in the east part of the eastern part of the world, we we find like Christianity, all these other things like exotic. Right? You find Christianity exotic? Not me. I went to a Christian <laughs> school, but like I'm sure people in Nepal, those mm, who didn't have the mm. chance to encounter Christianity like Tej and I did, right? They must be thinking of Christianity like like the way you look at Hinduism and Buddhism, mm -hmm. right? Yes, I, I understand how that could happen, but this side of the world has a way bigger, like, integral and holistic way of seeing things. So that's why I'm interested. That's the exoticism of seeing things as a whole and, and seeing that there's a lot of gods and gods maybe are also inside of you, you know? And God can also be nature and all these things. In Christianity, you don't have that. Like, you guys, you guys... How do you feel about that? Because you were in a in a Christian, pro not Protestant. <clears throat> I was Roman Catholic, dude. Roman Hard, Catholic. Yeah, hardcore. Yeah. I'm like Team Mary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, were, you, so, were you Team Mary for yeah, a long team time? Yeah, Team Rosary, Hail Mary, full of grace types. Like, yeah. Well, what what led you to make this decision to study like all these like things that um, you're studying right now? Growing up, uh, my aunt she. Um, she was always interested in these things. So mm -hmm. she kind of like always like slowly when I was a child, like would speak about things in a more holistic manner. Like if I was, I don't know, people say like, if you're having issues in digestion, maybe you're having issues in digesting emotions. I don't know. You mm -hmm. know, I, this is just an, an example. It's just like connecting the physical with the emotional. And she did that as I was a kid. And, um, and then I went to study uh, development, international development and African studies mm -hmm. uh, with the aim, like I just wanted to change the world, you know, I like I was young and I had this energy in me, like it was like this fire, you know, and I was like, I can, I feel like I can change the world. So I went into university and three years later reading about all the corruption in the in the developmental world it's a reality you know mm. there are very big corporations that there's like a lot of push and pull a lot of interest and that's not what i was vibing for you know like and i realized in my third year you know like if i want to change the world first i have to change myself i can't change anyone without changing me and then it's kind of like a domino effect if i change myself and my actions are are more centered and grounded and I emanate a bit more love and I understand myself deeper, then maybe the people around me will do it too, you know? Maybe they will feel the groundedness or the security to be vulnerable and they'll be able to be vulnerable with themselves too, you know? So that's kind of why. <laughs> Along these lines, uh, this recent, uh, I mean, this past one week I found out then you and the first one to do it from the European continent. You know what I'm saying? Like, feel this kind of way. I found out that 400 BC, you know, that, I mean, that... Uh, you as in who? You. Me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so people have been coming from <laughs> Europe to learn Buddhism and do that thing from uh -huh. way back time, like way before Christ to... So you know that Afghanistan, there was like uh, Buddhist statues, right? In Afghanistan that the mm. Taliban's like blew up. Like they had carved, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was like a massive, like, uh, 
You know what I'm talking about? Uh, like religious war? No, no. So there used to be, before uh, the Taliban became like a force to reckon in Afghanistan, there were Buddh- Buddha's huge statues mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that were carved out of the cliffs and mm-hmm. mountains. I, I heard about this. All right. I think you can look at pictures up also. And the modern technology also would be find it hard to do it like that. I feel just so beautiful. Like multiple, multiple statues, Buddhas. And the Taliban, once they came to power, one of the first things they did was level it with bombs. Mm-hmm. Like full bombed it, everything. And then um, uh, people started looking up like wh- who made that those statues in Afghanistan, right? So d- diving deeper, uh, they found out that 400 BC, like when Alexander and his uh, Alexander, the Great, yeah, what's his real name? Sorry, uh, Alexander. He came <laughs> to <laughs> that <invade>. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so when he went came to invade to the Asian side, right? Mm-hmm. He came up all the way to the Indus River and lost with the Indus. I mean, like the Indian then kings. He could not win India at all for multiple factors, like. <laughs> Uh, whatever like war mm-hmm. factors like especially the most notable one was because they never seen elephants before so Alexander's army for the first time in their life when they came to India Indian armies were fighting with elephants <laughs> they were like what the fuck is this like so anyway so but whatever happened they fought and I don't know what happened there was an exchange of culture uh, after there was a, some sort of peace and the fir- the thing the most that affected the uh, Greek army was Buddhism. Really? Yeah, you can look it up. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> and then, uh, so some one Greek general he even converted to Buddhism, right? And he took it on himself to w- Alexander's uh, empire was massive, right, across mm-hmm. Europe, t- like going into uh, North Africa and stuff too. So every city they were in. Like every so many kilometers, right? There was a city called Alexandria. Like he named a city after himself. There's one in Africa, somewhere in Middle East. That's in Egypt. Yeah, Egypt, and there w- there was one in Afghanistan too. Called Alexandria. Yeah. So still is the remains are still there, and when archaeologists looked it up, the Buddhist statues that were made, it was not a Buddhist style statue. It was like Greeks, mm-hmm. Greek style Buddhist, you know, Greek Buddha types. That's so interesting. And uh, they could not win. So obviously you can't beat them. You join them. Types, like. <laughs> so they said, okay, we'll, I don't know about Hinduism and stuff, but Buddhism they fucked with. So they took Buddhism with them. And the first, when the Buddhist scriptures, right? I don't know what, what's the Buddhist scripture called? I mean, the ah, mythi- like, right? yeah, something, the Buddhist writings. The first language that was it was translated into was Greek. Even also. before Sanskrit? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, but that Greek em- empire only lasted for like a hundred years. And this was at the latter part of that hundred years or something. So it it perished with the uh, empire. Oh, it's it was at the end. Yeah, it oh, couldn't reach all the way to the, all the way to Europe. Mm-hmm. This was before Christ. So if, had, if it would, was possible for buddhism to reach to europe i i guess there would be more influence of buddhism in europe but it stopped somewhere around afghanistan i think right? i wonder how the world would have been like if if that like i i guess a religious war would have come into play because christianity wouldn't have allowed it yeah buddha mm-hmm. would be there and christian christian uh, jesus would be born like a 400 years later. Oh, later. later. Okay, okay. Christianity came oh, later. I'm so bad with timelines. So. Yeah, sometimes I even wonder what would happen if Hitler won types like... Uh, if like he won? Like if Hitler won, Germany won World War Two. Yeah, everything would change. Where would we be right now? Like, <sighs> I don't know how I don't know how much it would change for us. What do you mean, dude? Obviously, like about different lifestyle, maybe. Different I think we would be speaking Japanese, bro, right now. Guys, everything would change. Even like, D was you just uh, you just thought about like t- taking a sip of your your thing, right? What if you didn't take a sip of your thing? What if you took the sip in two minutes? 
like what? butterfly effect butterfly effect everything Aston would change uh? that movie sorry which one the butterfly oh, I effect i never movie. watched yeah. it is it good is it good i watched it a long I time back. I, I don't remember well, yeah, i think it was good it. yeah yeah but like even if it's a big decision or a big win or lose a uh, loss from hitler i think okay maybe this is, i don't know if it's politically incorrect or anything but i think every single decision making and action and movement you do will change everything in the world you know yeah as like as big or as, or as small as it is you know that's how i feel mm -hmm. i know uh, definitely like it would have changed a lot of things because that would affect global economy and then global yeah. economy affects us but i'm just saying that you know in terms of how good or how bad situ the situation is right now in nepal i don't think it would have changed much <laughs> i <laughs> swear to god like <laughs> for the past like couple of months or weeks i've just been contemplating on how bad the situation is in in nepal you think Kapan. it's bad in what way it's Were you ungrateful prick it's you, you bad bandavani like you us we we can't feel the feel the with you get the whole magnitude of how bad it is man yeah we can't that's what i'm saying like we uh, can't exactly we can't so what are you talking about i'm talking about the like majority of the nepalese people and we like people like us this like probably like 1% in terms of what in terms of health in terms of sanitation everything everything everything, everything. yeah everything like it doesn't take much you know like you just walk out of here like you go to wherever you're trying to go and kind of like the buddha you know just observe like things it's not very good obviously like if you look deeper into it, it's way worse but just like yeah uh, the situation with the government there's an election tomorrow I don't know for a reason. Are you voting? Probably no. <laughs> it's it, it's just in some some vote? specific areas. Do I think vote? some uh some um places are oh. like during the main election the that was the district situation. Yeah, certain voting. districts I mm -hmm. think they had some foul play or something like that so they were doing re-elections. So that's going to happen tomorrow. And <coughs> that, that's just one example, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've run into some problems too. I think the biggest thing for me in in Kathmandu is the the pollution. Like of course the pollution and the lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Literally the other day <coughs> uh, Kathmandu <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was right on cue dude like fuck up. <laughs> Kathmandu became the most polluted city in the world like yeah. Two years what in a row. The <laughs> fuck. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> Honestly, like, I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, you don't give a fuck but you literally like live in a cloud of pollution yeah dude. you know uh, like we don't have any so no, i'm talking about like us people who don't have any other option like we can't break our head over it every day you know no but to what extent like like you do you vote what do you vote no i don't <laughs> well maybe <laughs> Like I don't vote Plus either. Blue, I'm, like, I'm even shit if those votes are not <laughs> like not that the pollution won't change. Yeah. You don't think so? If you vote for someone no. that that is no, on the system. So, 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 I'll, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you a small like occurrence. Okay, that just happened recently. So there was this guy who was a reporter. Okay, so he was like this. Um, he was like the saving grace for most people, you know. So you would bring up controversial people and try to expose them and do a lot of these things he's also a Guinness book world record <laughs> holder for the longest Ravi Lamisani oh, what about him so i mean there was this guy right like, so <laughs> when when people saw this guy coming up the ranks so they had some hope you know but he was just a, um, a journalist mm -hmm. at the time and then he quit journalism and he decided to run for office yeah okay so that's what th when he decided to do that or like when he announced everyone was like excited even we like even though i'm very pessimistic about the situation right now even in some corner i was like oh, maybe you know maybe this guy can do something and this guy did win so he made um we he, he got the seat in the house mm -hmm. but he's been he did it illegally So the journalist did it illegal. Yeah. So he apparently has a dual citizenship which is illegal in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean it's just illegal illegal okay. But 
to file for office obviously there's a process you have to s- submit your documents and so he did all that illegally and then now the story is more about his you know so what he's done mm. after like getting into office so which is basically this controversy and he was i think he was removed from his it's illegal in nepal to have two passports yeah and what did he use the two passports for no he just kept it it's, he it's just, just kept illegal them. to that's keep that's the only them. thing yeah. he did yeah so do you think that's like, that bad no people say he was connected to this like i mean the us government pushed him up the ranks also to be a pop- puppet for them in oh. this I'm, i'm sure he's, he's so he had a US needed a lot of funding to mm-hmm. so but, internally but it's just sad to see you know i mean i don't know if he's going to change things or not but that's what happened and then i think he's out of the house now he doesn't have maybe a seat anymore. maybe as younger generations come into come into politics maybe they will change something you know the generations always bring something different although they're very easily a lot not just i'm not talking about nepal i'm talking about like all over the world people are very easily manipulated and influenced like they mm-hmm. you know it's very easy to corrupt i think this is my idea like to corrupt people that are coming in like freshly coming in you know yeah like and, ho- and by the time they make it to the top they're like completely mm. they have a lot of liabilities and they have some skeletons in the closet that's so crazy like i don't know that like that's so crazy in my brain to th- like to think that you choose to go into politics which is supposed to be something good to just fuck up your country for your own personal gain you know that that's that for me doesn't go into my head like i would never think about doing that you know mm-hmm. i don't know that's been happening since time in memorial i think so abusing power yeah of course it's mm-hmm. it's this feeling the feeling of the moment you get a bit of power you you are you kind of feel like you're limitless you know people can't impose things on you and if you have too much ma- i feel like if people get money like for example you win the euro million or whatever right? do you know what yeah no uh what is it called what w- lottery uh, lottery yeah, yeah. Uh, when someone wins the lottery, someone that didn't have money their whole lives wins the lottery. There is no structure to receive that money. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So there's this. Most of cases they go broke again. Yeah, right? they go broke very quickly yeah. because there is no structure. Because there's mm. this feeling of like th- this feeling of power and abundance, but then very easily that goes away because people don't know how to hold that. Yeah. And I think maybe that's the same with power. It's like if you never had power and suddenly you have all the power in the world, like how are you going to use that, you know? Like people at some point will abuse because it feels good. It feels good that people are doing things for you. They're they're not even questioning it, you know? I think they along with the structure, they I think they need a lot of good guidance too. You know? Yeah, guidance. Because I mean, so like for example, like you see someone who's born into a rich family. So uh, they've been rich all their life but most in most cases they've been rich all their life but still like they do a lot of things i mean like with that money mm-hmm. which they're not supposed to Yeah of course What do you mean It's not coke and No i mean they abuse it but I don't know I've seen a lot of people yeah. do that you know But that's it, also so like I think I think so that's like along with structure so they needed guidance more than that and here the guidance that you'll receive is it's not good basically yeah. so that's what i mean like when they uh, by the time they make it to the top they are just like corrupted i feel like that's the we came on so like you know how like in colleges you have these like initiations when you're joining a frat or something like that mm. i think in politics also they do that shit you know they do <laughs> they make them do something interesting they put like skeletons in the closet and then like you know now you don't have any choice but to be bad yeah you have like to be part of this jeffrey epstein types yeah yeah i think like a big point here that's important is the lack of mentorship mm. and throughout time like people had they they chose one type of work and they had a mentor that would help them perfect that art you know the woodworker or the metal worker or i don't know the 
I don't know, whatever. Mm. Uh, but or you would you would continue the work from your family, and the the family would be a structure and a mentorship for you, or you would go and learn with someone that really knows their shit. And we now go to university or don't or or have jobs or this or that. Cool, we learn, we learn through experience, and we learn academically if we choose to. But there's no real mentorship. Yeah. There's no like someone that takes you by the hand and be like, let's go, like do this, do that. And then kind of like is there when you fall and is there when you don't fall, you know, someone that really holds you that isn't a parent because parents, we know how that is. Like it's not always easy with parents because you have a lot of, you know, relationship stuff, but there's no yeah. more mentorship. And I think that's a lack of structure that that we actually need, you know. And mentorship. Do you, do you like with so, so if it's so I'll ask you this, like if you had to choose, right, to be born in a generation where like you said, uh, back in the days, so they had like, even even in Nepal like they uh, like Newari people, so mm -hmm. they had like guilds, different guilds and like one guild practiced um, fine arts, one guild practiced like carpentry and What's stuff a like guild? that. Guild is guild. Guild is like a house, oh, okay. like a family. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call that? No, no, it's not exactly a house caste. Of house of the dragons, but kind of like that. You know, something that differentiates your family mm -hmm, due mm -hmm. to like a certain uh, profession. Okay, so sorry, where was I going with this? Mm, there were some things, some history <laughs> lessons. If I could choose to. Oh live. yeah, if you could choose to be born at a time like that. Or right now where you have like limitless choices, being the free spirited person you are. I, of course, this is like a really nice like question of like, which era would you choose to live in? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. You know, like, I don't know, maybe I would live in when Woodstock happened. Maybe people were really free, you know, that would have been dope. But like in a, in a serious matter, mm. like, I wouldn't choose to live like that choice doesn't exist. So what I can do is bring bring maybe that mentorship and the things that we are missing that existed before and bringing it here because the freedom that I have as a woman, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have it in that time. W could I could I exchange my freedom for mentorship or use the freedom that I have now and bring that mentorship and seek someone that will give me that mentorship, you know? Okay. Sorry for taking a nice question and just <laughs> making it deep. <laughs> so, uh, what else about? Uh, Can I just ask a question? Yeah, before? please, please. Like please. with fighting, we'll like oh. yeah, you, you're teaching, and do you feel like you become a sort of mentor for for the students? Like, of course, they're your friends, but do I you feel, feel like? like I'm the I'm the father, man. So, isn't that a mentorship <laughs> situation? <laughs> Daddy Davis. Sorry. Isn't that kind of? Yeah, yeah. I take that shit very seriously. I don't take it for granted, mm. even for a single day. But I don't let it stress me out too. Like, I enjoy pressure and stuff, and the expectation obviously brings responsibility and some pressure. But it's okay. Keeps me sharp. Yeah. Mentally, spiritually, also. So yeah, yeah. Because you, um, like you train with them, you train like in terms of physical, you, you have physical training, but within that there's mental training. And within yeah. like, what do you do in terms of mental training, like to push them in that way? Uh, I try to lead with example. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I do use my words, but what do you see me like around on a podcast or on like when you're hanging out and I'm not like that. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't talk much. I chose to be a young coach because I can lead with example mm -hmm. physically. I don't be, I don't want to be a coach when I was, I'm old and fucking I'm sitting on the corner. I can't even demonstrate. Yeah, you can't more. even do it yeah. anymore. Yeah. So I try like to lead. Like the fat PE teacher kind of thing. Mm, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> not in a bad way. But it's like <laughs> no. no, because uh, yeah. because then it's you can't yeah, you can't yeah, explain, yeah. explain and you can't you can't <laughs> no, like it's okay. It's we, we say <laughs> fat people all the time. Dude. No, but it's I think yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, 
um, it's just weird that it's like so free now that tell how you want to say like you said okay you want to be so zoned out that uh, you want to be zoned in yeah all the good times are like you're so free but like still you you just have to tip to around like every topic no, every subject uh, we need we need structure too much freedom is also not good mm-hmm. man people just don't know what to do with too much freedom also yeah there has to be some sort of guidance yeah coming back to mentorship and all but but what will lead you to a um, that mentor like there should be some force or some kind of a channel you know what i'm saying like mm. what mentor there are not mentors for sale or something right you need to find what's your line that you want to go with and along those lines you will find mentors right yeah but and the thing is before finding a mentor that does what you like you need to find your passion yeah, and finding I mean. your passion takes so much time like some people know it straight away some people Dude, some don't. people don't even find till they die like yeah. some people go through their life without finding passion yeah so yeah uh, coming back to what you were asking sorry i'll quickly finish like i find it pretty that passion whatever but i try to do it with action mm. and yeah and how do you uh, take your mind to like to the edge I'm always on edge. You're always on edge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the answer of the yeah, year. Yeah, I like what do you want me to say? I'm always on edge. No nothing nothing's going to take me there. So when you're training, what like takes you off edge? I think that I can have an answer to that. Okay. Yeah. What takes you off edge then? Uh, you just smoke some weed and stuff. Mm. Right? Yeah. Oh, but but you need the taking off edge part in order to then be on edge. You feel like it balances you out or Yeah, normally I'm always on edge. Mm-hmm. So I need to get off the edge sometimes mm-hmm. like uh, like hanging with my friends and stuff. Uh, doing a podcast. I'm not always edgy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes the mind is always going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I I uh sometimes when I'm like even I think I'm sure all of all of us like I I'm someone else when I'm by myself. Yeah, completely. I'm like wh- like what the fuck like who is this guy here? <laughs> I was like what are you uh, what are you but it's good it's good it like surface uh, some deep shit comes up, you know. Especially w- that's why I love doing mushrooms because m- one of my best humbling experiences would always be when I'm on shrooms and when I'm with my friends, yeah, we're having a good time but suddenly when you're alone maybe you went to take a leak or something but it feels like it was like one hour cuz just through that walk to the washroom and back you had like thousand fucking thoughts already like so i i love those kind of scenarios yeah for sure i think uh also to go back to your question of how i started all of this psychedelics was a very big part of it like the first time i took psychedelics like I saw the world in a completely different way. Like you see all the everything is moving so you su- suddenly understand like life is not stable and permanent. Everything is always moving, everything is always vibrating. Like you are just a piece in all of this, you know? You see all these like I don't know, you you guys went through it like mm-hmm. you just see so much you, and you have to take your like after you see that you can't unsee it. You can't unsee the stable like you can't think that the stable is just a fucking table. It, the table is a table, but the table is, is like the table is so many type. colors <laughs> and <laughs> there's texture to the table. The table like the table vibrates the same way as you. Do you actually know? The ta- the table is made of the same thing as you, but it <coughs> vibrates in a different manner. Do you, do mm-hmm. you understand that? Like everything in the universe is like is created by quarks. Uh, it's like like these dots and then th- i think atoms yeah and that creates atoms and proton i don't know check it out but uh that makes the like the quarks vibrate in a certain way which makes the atom vibrate in a certain way mm-hmm. which makes the the molecule. table oh. uh the molecule or, yeah. yeah check it out <laughs> but um but it makes the table or it makes you so yeah. if it vibrates in a more intense manner then it will create a table and the table will be more you know it's th- like the table is how do you call it like <laughs> solid <laughs> solid yeah. yeah if it vibrates in a different manner then it creates humans so in the end we're all like made of the same thing and i think psychedelics really birthed that idea for me and like understanding that i have to go beyond myself to understand the world also you know mm-hmm. 
But uh, sometimes, aren't you afraid that, like, like that book, Alchemist, like the answer is right there. The answer is always right here. But you have to like, I was in Portugal, and I came all the way to Nepal. Come on, Nepal to live in a monastery for five months, because I was looking for discipline. Mm -hmm. and i wanted to learn about buddhism but my big thing was i needed discipline i didn't have a structure and a dis and discipline in portugal so i left and i went to a monastery thinking i could find discipline only to realize at the end i cannot find discipline anywhere the discipline is only coming from me you know of course your environment can help you and can enable you to be more disciplined but in the end it's just you you know so it's completely the alchemists like you have to go all over the world to see everything only to realize that the everything is inside is right there. yeah that that book is bomb <laughs> yeah that was part of our school curriculum man it was yeah that's crazy like like every, yeah alchemist we had to read all of paulo Coelho's books you did yeah <laughs> <laughs> really uh, yeah what do you think i am that's dude <laughs> Yeah, I That's mean, so it's not though. not because I didn't started uh, wanting to read out of passion. You mm -hmm. know, it was it was part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I couldn't fucking evade it. Like, <laughs> if I wanted to go out and meet girls, I had to read the book. So then you read the book. What do you and want me to do? And it was a great lesson. Yeah, and we had to write up and stuff, and then uh, the teacher would ask you random question. Okay. And we we didn't have Google and stuff, right? Access to internet. ChatGPT. Yeah, so we didn't we couldn't get a summary and shit. Like yeah. we had to read it. So, yeah, and we had to answer when asked. So if you don't answer, they're going to cut your outing. That means once a month you get to go out. Oh, we, really? Yeah, we, would, we used to live in, like, conven convents for, like, mm -hmm. boys' days. What do you call that? <laughs> uh, that's a... Yeah, that's a... Isn't it uh, still a convent? Yeah, and I don't <laughs> think so. Convents for ladies. Uh, yeah, whatever. Un convent, yeah. Uh, but you you had priests did you have monks yeah priests, christian uh, monks pri yeah, priests. jesuits in his service <laughs> what is the biggest Same. thing that oh. you know biggest <laughs> thing that you took out of a uh, jesuit priests he went to a protestant school oh, i protestant. went to a jesuit okay. school but just for two years i was there in Sass oh, Roman Catholic. yeah Roman, sorry. And before that, you, you got a taste together? of two. He, he played for both teams. Oh. I was and like team Catholic. Did dude. you feel a difference? I don't know this. No, I, like they wouldn't really enforce like religion on you. You know, there, there okay. was just like Sunday chapel. That's it. That's just what you sit for. And, and obviously you celebrate they, the holidays. Celebrate, yeah. Yeah. They celebrate like the holidays and stuff. There's like carol singing and all these kinds of things. But it's not really enforced. You know? And the way they acted like as Protestant priests or as Jesuit priests, was it different? The school that I went to, they didn't have pro Protestant priests. Oh, no. Okay. no it's, it was just a... Minister. Yeah. Oh. No, Tena Kuiban. Yeah, and Kuiban's the principal. That was appointed by the yeah, yeah. church. Yeah. But our was like full on... Yeah, we used to... I, I know all the prayers and the hymns. Did you find Jesus? Jesus found me, <laughs> but <I was> like, <laughs> like... Seriously, I was like okay. a lost sheep and he found me, dude. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> 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 I was lost, but now oh I'm God. found. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. No, but seriously, did you feel like it was good for you, or or okay, on a serious note, I I was there for eight nine years. Right? That's a ma major chunk. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, if I have to ever pray, right? Or getting on when I, when I get on a plane, I say the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> that should tell you how much I am like, like <laughs> I don't say that any like oh money payment and all stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be like our Father. Like so, um, so it did it did leave an impact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but I grew up like Nepal also is very secular country, right? Like my family is also very secular. My only my school was a roman catholic all the students were came from different backgrounds so we all of us we didn't look at it as a torture or something we enjoyed going to church we enjoyed singing along being in the choir celebrating in christian uh jesuit like holidays and mm -hmm. saint mm -hmm. ignatius of whatever Loyola, whatever this and that and every single thing but out of all of those one thing stuck with me the most was the affinity I had towards uh, Mother Mary. 
When okay. I said Mary earlier, you thought I was kidding. I was gonna see. No, no, I understood there was yeah, a joke, so seri- serious joke. Yeah, I mean, she's not God. Like they don't refer to her as God or something, but she's who she is, right? Mm. So, so yeah. Sometimes when I say, I I tell myself like you know she carry your prayer to whom I don't know to her son or to the God or like <laughs> that that part I don't understand. Mm. But like as a as a as a messenger or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think something that i've learned and i see is that all of these things are just containers you know it's like you have a a present and you have a box mm-hmm. and you give the box to the person but inside like the box in itself may be beautiful mm-hmm. but the box is in the present what's inside is the present it's like the nectar you know well, the nectar <laughs> 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 and um and all these prayers and all these uh yeah, takes, all these prayers and all these gods and all these mantras and all these you know uh practices they're all containers for you to channel a feeling you know so to w- towards mother mary you channel one sort of feeling and it's kind of like a motivation for you to channel that feeling do you get what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what's your take on um here. all the goddesses in our hindu culture i think they're all containers for for different who's your favorite goddess come on dude. You, you surely have one man <laughs> um well i have two favorite goddesses i mean like in the within the hindu yeah, hi, yeah. Hi, hindu team uh obviously kali and lakshmi these are my two interesting why because i i it's really money feel money. them sorry no no just kidding lakshmi money uh, yeah, yeah because lakshmi is abundance prosperity. you need yeah. money to be happy then. <laughs> yeah but imagine like lakshmi is abundance in greek mythology you have uh athena no hephaestus i forgot aphrodite no god damn it the the method the method is also abundance mm-hmm. so these are these are like containers of abundance so i love um i love that you invite lakshmi into your home because you're inviting abundance into your home and i think that god gods and goddesses are like we personified feelings and things that we want to attain in order to remind us and so it's closer to us you know it's easier to like for a human to invite lakshmi and have an image of lakshmi than have an image of nothing and mm-hmm. say i'm just inviting abundance so it, i think it's like um a container so lakshmi for sure because abundance dude, is I'm important i'm team lakshmi do you're, te- you're team lakshmi too yeah always always got to have lakshmi right yeah. there but always invited but lakshmi is not it's not just money yeah. like abundance, abundance is not just money yeah. abundance is abundance of everything abundance of love and knowing that you and yourself you are an abundant being that you you have everything inside of you and that will never finish you know is it i don't know man <laughs> i'm i, I always yeah. thought it was just like she was like money the treasurer of god's days Well, it's God it's money, but it's abundance. Yeah. God is a prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, usko department mein aapsa. I guess you take a I'm I'm taking a step back and looking at it in a more open way yeah. rather than than being so, you know. And Kali for Kali um just very interesting, you know. I th- there's just I mean, that's a little I mean, Mm. Just, that, that that name for a goddess is a little ra- racist, no? Kali. Yeah. Oh, what, what does Kali mean? B- blacky. Yeah. Oh. Blackish. Blackish. Yeah. Interesting. And she is painted black, right? Yeah. I I I don't know. I just think she's interesting because she correct it's, me it's if I'm black. wrong. No, huh? it's just black. It's just color. Oh. I know, but she's also her skin is also black. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sometimes she's depicted with with a uh, black skin. Yeah, yeah. but I like, don't know if it's the one. Either. It's just a color. Yeah. Based on our skin. Yeah, so it's just color. Um, I'm just saying. Like, it's like uh, North African. <laughs> no, I wonder what it African means American because money, money. Uh, who uh, who has who is blue? Krishna. Krishna is blue. Uh-huh. Why is Krishna? You know, there. This is why I'm so interested. It's like, why is it blue? Why why is this red? Why are you using this? You know, it's just containers for you to like connect Krishna or connect uh, Kali to sp- something specific. You know, everything has a meaning. Mm. 
and with Kali, like the fact that she drink, like she cuts the the head of it, like she cuts ignorance, right? And then she drinks the blood, so ignorance is not spread. I think that's kind of interesting because you you see something that could spread that could be bad for humanity, and she kind of you know drinks the blood herself. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I'm not saying I'm not saying you, the whole story, you are, but you obviously know more than we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. so <like. laughs> this is the small parts that I know because uh, I think we know more about Christianity than you do. Like, <laughs> Most so probably, to be honest. Right now, like, uh, <laughs> Most probably. And what about the dude side? Like, who who, who do you rock with? Which <laughs> side? Which side? The god god side. The male gods. The male, male gods. Yeah. The dude side. The dude side. Um. Krishna. No, I guess. Shiva. No, I guess. Uh, I mean, like you were, you were celebrate. Shivaratri. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I do. Was, I you were like invited <laughs> to the party already. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, Shivaratri was dope, and like Shivaratri is dope. But yeah, not just Shiva. I think, um, you know, in the Trisuli, it's like uh, Shiva, uh, Vishnu right it's vishnu shiva and uh, brahma, brahma yeah, so brahma. the creator the preserver brahma, and the destruction yeah. the destroyer, i think yeah. the destroyer Us. i think this is like three three um the three 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 three. like, like the name of the father and son and yeah, the exactly Spirit, yeah. exactly it's a trinity <laughs> 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 and um and this like you need a creator you need a preserver an energy that preserves and then you need an energy that that destroys so more creation can come uh -huh. so in the end it's also uh, it's also their cycle it's a circle it's a cycle uh -huh. you know the um, the snake Ouroboros? Ouroboros? Uh -huh. do you know uh -huh. like the snake I, that I eats its own tail mm -hmm. oh, it's okay. kind of the same feeling of like you need to create you need to destroy and you need to preserve mm -hmm. the energy of of the cosmos you know i yeah that's my guy's team i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting and what, sorry what, what's been your biggest like culture shock here in nepal you've been here for quite some time right now i've been here for five years on and off yeah so what was it like the first time you arrived here culture you shock? should be a yeah. nepali citizen you should honor first, first i have to speak <laughs> nepali <laughs> um to a culture shock mm. actually like nothing really Wait, come on. We we all know that's not true. <laughs> okay, there. Yeah, okay. Like in a way, like nothing because I'm so open. I'm I've been to different cultures, so not really a shock. I think a sh sh the word shock is very big, but two things that really like touched you touched me mm. was number one, seeing the goat's head on the counter of the meat shop the like the yellow goat <laughs> head for me that's something that like i don't i never seen that before yeah. i saw it in like i saw cows in in morocco you know stripped i don't know but i never saw that like that that was just a small like first thing so they cut that and give it to kali do they yeah i know durga ma like no, no, no. the sacrifice yeah i think yeah. So, I is think. it for kali yeah, kali or know. one of the uh, mm. the bloodthirsty like isn't like the goat a goat's head the sign of the devil or something uh, dude, I it, don't is, know. Uh, it is in i don't know in the Sat east but in the west yeah it is a satanic yeah, yeah, yeah. it is a satanic um so yeah it that thing. bothers you because you're standing it didn't bother <laughs> me but i just saw like a goat's head that's like yellow i'm like fuck i don't really want to see that you know but it's good <laughs> it's important to uh, to see and you'd be okay with chicken head. I never <laughs> saw. <laughs> oh. so, I mean, like, why specifically goat? Cause because like I just—it was like this image that I have. Oh. It's just like this oh. goat and super yellow goat. So it's been there for a while, you know. Mm, yeah. And the other thing that really like kind of bothered me was the lack of privacy. So being in the monastery, um, you know, I'm. I come from a house that's very open. I say I'm going to leave. Okay, I give justification because it's my family, but I don't give justification if it's not, you know? Just, I'm going to go there and I'll be back. But in the monastery, I felt like I had to um, justify and people started asking me a lot of questions like, so where have you been? Where are you going? Who are you with? Why are you dressed like that? <coughs> and as a European, mm. I didn't understand that's that that was like... 
understand. Scared, <laughs> caught right into the mic, dude. Like, <laughs> like, boom, like, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't understand that, that was a cultural thing because you yeah. you live in community, you live with your family, so it's people are curious also, you know. And at the beginning, I was I would kind of answer because I wanted to be polite, and at the end. I, at some point it kind of like bothered me like I don't want to answer these questions because I don't feel like I need to give justification to anyone where I've been or why I didn't sleep here you know <clears throat> like so this privacy thing but then understanding that in in Europe we have mm. completely different family structures yeah. we like we don't live with the whole family we don't have that much expectation we don't uh it's not so close proximity we see each other for easter and christmas and all these things you know everyone together maybe on sunday just to have family time you know but it's not like you guys have family all the time no like with all these parties with all these like mm. how do you feel with your family <laughs> it, it was like especially when we finish like college and mm -hmm. we came back to settle here i think there was like a adjustment period back then mm -hmm. because so most of us like us like i, w I would say like privileged people of kahrundu so so we have access to a lot of things like mm -hmm. the internet movies so we grew up with a lot of like different rule sets in our head as well mm -hmm. and then we've never lived for like a very long extended period of time with our families and especially like going yeah. to college you know in india there's a lot of freedom and then after that you just come here and then you realize the rules are different mm -hmm. you're still living in nepal mm -hmm. you're still living in a, i wouldn't say it's like too conservative but somewhat so yeah that 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 was there was an adjustment period so did you feel like the pressure from your family and the, this privacy thing that i'm talking about not not exactly about privacy mm -hmm. but just like different things you know somewhat like uh, like freedom yeah, yeah maybe privacy comes under that too but yeah in so in school you like you stayed in rooms with a lot of people or yeah a lot dormitories, of yeah. dormitories yeah dormitories yeah yeah so you didn't have a lot of privacy then no either no so exactly so not exactly privacy mm -hmm. but more like freedom you know just mm -hmm. to do especially like after we thought it after we finished our boarding school we went to college and then there was like was a dog out of the cage that yeah so mm -hmm. we were like you know, wild. you know what dogs do right especially like the first like time you know for food and stuff <laughs> Especially the first time when you <laughs> See, something That's up. how we felt because <laughs> we were in a boarding school mm -hmm. up to high school, right? And suddenly you're in one of like the biggest cities in Asia. Like you can do whatever the fuck you want. Where did you go to college? You went to Bangalore. I went to Pune. Initially, oh. I was in Mumbai for oh, yeah. oh. a year. What did you study? Me? Uh, mm -hmm. I Both. studied sociology and psychology. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, so, okay, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, but I don't know how much I picked up from there. I guess like with bachelors like we're too young I think. Yeah. You know. Too young for choices. Yeah, too young for choices like that. The exactly that's what I was saying. So like after I moved back here, so there was so there was like a three three year period of like complete freedom mm -hmm. and then you come back here now again like you know, you got to follow certain rules. Mm -hmm. And initially it was difficult like we had a lot of squabbles as well. But then over time like we we like met somewhere in between i would say mm -hmm. cuz i my mom and my grandmom my aunt everyone understands like certain things yeah so and i compromise as well yeah cuz i guess it is like you are coming back home so yeah. you do have to compromise and adapt yeah but but the other side also has to understand that yeah but depends on depends on how old they that. are though yeah Excuse me, I need to go to the loo. Excuse me too. Take this. Break. I was Break. I think she wants to go to the loo. I also loot. need. Oh yeah, go for it. Then. No, go for it no, first. Please, after you. Ma'am. Do you mind if we carry on? No, please do. We'll 
quickly give a plug to our second chapter. Uh, I'm Rishabh. He is starting. <laughs> say something on that, Nathes, quickly. So Rishabh yeah. is starting <coughs> another Golf of Pasco parallel all the way in America, New York City. Represent. I think uh, that works. Not working. So I'm uh, I'm a channel member, Zani, na. So is that episode 119? Or like different series are there? Golf of Pass, uh, America, Hale. Miss Miss North America, Miss Nepal, North America <laughs> types. Recently, <laughs> something less, eh, na first guest. Uh. So that that's pretty cool, eh, na. I mean, Golf Golf Pass International, like America, one, 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 Queens, ma, boss, sir. This Australia, one, kid, all franchise, sir, I'm born, eh. I'm not friend. Talk to Christmas, go, well, as if it's. Opta. <laughs> I also we are looking uh, we are looking for donations I am like I'm ro someone upgrade going to desperately party records I am so Australia America ma sunne so Dubai Dubai ma sunne that's why I'm so anonymously yeah no 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 mostly what have you locks me what have locks me I mean he locks me go like dog I hold it like so by the please I didn't know that I mean like abundance ma help Gordinus and also uh also uh, we are going international literally like this is our first european guest <laughs> wait there was eh yeah, th- he's american which one here is his name eh yeah, joseph joseph yeah yeah am i your first european <laughs> yeah 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 Damn. <laughs> yeah w- we already had our first american right one two okay three continents down so this is also a full english uh episode cuz normally we speak half half days yeah I, i know i've been t- i try to watch your episodes but then at yeah. some point i'm like what do i do with this just just no yeah no, it's okay it's okay just you can just leave it there um i try to watch your episodes and uh and i'm like you you like interchange Uh, from ne- from yeah, you yeah, interchange yeah. language, and at some point, I'm like, okay, I can't watch this anymore because yeah. I really don't understand it. <laughs> But you've been living here for like five years, huh? Have you picked up? Um, or like at least to make a conversation enough to make a conversation. Words. It's very shameful to be honest. But mm. the first time that I came, I was uh, the way that I went into the monastery yeah. was by um, t- by teaching English. So I was teaching English to monk to monks. And uh, so no one wanted to speak uh, Nepali to me. Mm. Although I did pick up some words, it wasn't really a conversational situation because everyone realized like I speak English, I want to learn yeah. English. So they would. And that happened throughout the years of like, even if I'm trying to like say more Nepali words, yeah. people are excited about like, wow, you know, Sida, you know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> you know, all these small words and, and they get excited with it. But then there's no continuity you know yeah. then it's al- always english and um and i would stay here for five five months mm-hmm. and five months in portugal so then i would go back and not use the words at all or completely forget it was poor poor um poor effort from my part also to be honest because i didn't know how long i was going to stay you what's know your, what's your uh, first language My mother tongue is Portuguese. My so my mother is Portuguese and my dad's Belgian. So I speak Portuguese and French. And I uh, How did you pick studied up? Uh, uh, You studied I studied in English. Uh, okay. And if you know Portuguese, you kind of know Spanish to be honest. Uh. But um I'm not great at speaking French and my mm. Portuguese is decaying. <laughs> like I guess I have different like personalities like Yeah, they say that, right? Like when you speak a different language, you completely. change your personality. Like in English, I'm like, you know, I'm myself, you know. I yeah. can <laughs> I can give you my personality in English completely. In Portuguese, I have two <laughs> spectrums or I'm like a really good girl, really respectful family girl, you know, or like ghetto type so <laughs> i have both and then in french it's more like i only learned with my dad mm-hmm. speaking so i taught myself how to write, write. and stuff it's more of like a seven year old mm. <laughs> so so english i can write essays in english i can't write essays in my mother, mother tongue never you mean portuguese yeah i couldn't it's kind of shitty but 
that's how English kind of overpowered, you know? Mm. Better than learning German. I would love to learn German. No, I'm mean saying if Hitler would have won, Four. we would be um, learning oh. German. Like <laughs> full circle. <laughs> Eating my own tail. I guess. I guess so. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that didn't happen. Ger- German sounds like a very tough language. Uh. It is tough. I mean, not, not in the sense of like to uh, tough to learn, but just how they speak. It's also tough to learn because they uh, invert the sentence. Mm-hmm. So in English, you, in you would say, I sit on the chair. Maybe in German, they would put chair, I sit or something like that. They <laughs> like invert Yoda. stuff. They invert stuff. I don't know. In Nepali also the same thing. Oh, they do? Yeah. I didn't know that. Nepali mm-hmm. inverted the other. We say kursi first. No? <laughs> Chair ma poila bostu banzan. Bostu banzan da. English ma... W- what was the sentence you used? Sorry. You sit on the chair? I sit on the chair. Chair ma bossi... Bossi te banzan. So mm-hmm. you say chair first. Yeah, so you, say so the you give the first. theme first and then you... Yeah. yeah. I think it's just in English. Mostly. Or is it the same in Portuguese? Same in Portuguese. Maybe that's like same in French. Mm. But it's kind of like Latin, yeah, Latin yeah. based. Yeah, I think yeah because it's Latin based. Because I love how Brazilian people speak Portuguese, English, English, English. Oh, English. Yeah, when how br- Brazilian uh, people speak English is one of my favorite things to. It's like my ASMR keep on saying. I swear, I swear, because uh, when I, at the ju- jiu-jitsu school I went to in thailand was there was one brazilian coach mm. brazilian half brazilian half japanese but he spent all his Pretty life in dope. brazil right so and brazilian japanese people also have some weird like history yeah, yeah because japanese uh, went to sao paulo uh-huh. so uh i don't know why there's this governmental thing yeah, exactly. i don't know mm. why but you go to sao paulo and it, there's like small like Japanese ladies mm. and, and like I've seen Japanese ladies in kimonos, you know. And they and speak Portuguese. Yeah, they yeah. S- they're they're Brazilian. L- that like that guy, all these uh, kid, eh? Leo de Machida. Leo de Machida and uh-huh. all, all are Brazilian Japanese, uh-huh. eh? like Horuguchi, all these guys. It's a pretty good mix, to be honest. Uh, and uh, so every time they taught a class, right? I used to love how they used to explain a technique. Mm-hmm. You want to choke? Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Pay attention, my friend. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> They're like trying to say, pay attention. Right? <laughs> That's uh, funny. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. <laughs> right? Sometimes even I use that out here. I'll be s- some silly guy. I'll be like, hey, pay attention. What are you doing? <laughs> And they'd have no fucking clue They're what you're no talking about. Like <laughs> the context of it all. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're the kind of guy that sometimes doesn't give context at all. <laughs> no? Just yeah. figure it out you yourself. Sometimes huh? just like... You give something and yeah, figure it out. Figure it out. I don't have time for that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, languages can be... Uh, that was pretty interesting how you said different languages bring out different personality. Mm-hmm. Do you have that? Did you notice? I just, I was as I was listening, I was trying to think, uh, Nepali, when we speak Nepali, we have a different personality, man. Oh. Uh-huh. Like, but like yeah, a little ghetto types. You're Nepali. more ghetto in yeah. Nepali. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Because we we didn't grow up in a household where we had to speak in that. So like Nepali has like a, has like different versions. Mm-hmm. There's like a ghetto way of speaking, mm-hmm. and then there's like this like extra polite way. But and most, then there's like one one type that is used by like back in the day it was used by the royals. Oh. But now it's like common thing. We speak, Eastern, Eastern Nepal Nepal types. Mm-hmm. we speak the eastern like yeah. yeah eastern Nepal would dialect. you speak with Vinny we speak Darjeeling dialect yeah and you learned that in school yeah, yeah. Oh. Vinny learned that because his parents were from Darjeeling mm-hmm. so he knows that dialect too so we learned it first and he learned it through his parents mm-hmm. so it's very different how people in Nepal speak like if you if you go from east to west Wait, by the time Milan. you reach is it? Mike Milan Maybe you are more respectful. <laughs> I said, hey, dude, no, check the mic. He's like, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Something like that. Hajur means that. Yeah, so by the time you reach the West, it won't sound like Nepali at all. Because they speak very differently. 
compared to us. Yeah, they speak. Who who? Western Nepal. Well, pa- people oh, Western from Nepal. Okay, West. Yeah. Uh, West Nepal. And they don't understand us. We find it difficult to understand mm-hmm. them. I've seen like a lot of people in our comment section as well, no? Because mostly the people that watch our show are people who are from that region. So they understand that uh Eastern kind of Nepali, you know, that the one Vini, Vini and we speak. How come how come that's your demographic? Because you they know? they get the um, they get all the nuances, uh-huh. all the jokes, uh-huh. the tonality, mm-hmm. everything is similar with the eastern people of Nepal. But then as you move towards the west because it's different so they find it difficult to understand. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to make a point or like you're trying to make a joke. Yeah, to relate. They don't find it funny. It's <laughs> they don't yeah, it's not, it's not yeah. on cue like if it's very different for them. And when I see theirs is also it's like it's not even funny, you know. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, it's yeah. just different how we speak. So yeah. Unless you interact with a lot of people from like different mm-hmm. places. Asti, I told you that I'm I'm reading this book called Kathmandu mm. slowly but steadily. Uh that is really that written book recently. Kid is it? Written well written book by this mm. guy Thomas Bell. Yeah, it's been nice to can he wrote it living in Patan. So he was a journalist for the independent Scotland Scotland? Yeah, a Scottish guy. Interesting. So he came here and his his journey and stuff, like his observations and and going deep diving deep into Newari culture in Patan, Bhaktapur and uh, Kathmandu side. When when did he come here? Uh, like w- w- it's based on what time? Uh he writes about the history but he was when he narrates the Kathmandu street parts when he's walking around. I think it's around 2008 10 oh, okay. some pretty okay, okay. fairly recent yeah. but not uh, like right now when they have like social media and stuff right at them he's talking about like when the internet was just getting picking mm-hmm. up like proper type so pretty recent and yeah so it, that book is giving me like a new perspective perspective of the city and the same place I came from and the people that came before us what's know? something that stuck to you that you could teach us uh i mean i'm still pretty early into 50 pages right now but uh so far um we's mainly talking about like pattern and how like tej was saying um they were broken down into different guilds and you know? mm. yeah mm-hmm. so where one family the mental part any bhadracharyas and all uh-huh. they were like the priest gang like priests like the people who were supposed who had the keys to the temple and stuff and there were so even within newar culture half are buddhist half are hindus mm-hmm. right so the buddhist ones uh, the shakyas and all they are more into art and stuff you know whereas the hindu newars are more into business into mm-hmm. selling metal metal craftsmen work, yeah, craftsmen yeah because they did the the um, temples they did the business with tibet right yeah 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 so exactly Exactly, I was about to say Wait, something like that. Wait, but so they're Hindus? Where? Like this is the Hindus, right? Yeah, they're yeah. More business oriented. Yeah, yeah. And they are the ones that did more business with Tibet? Buddhists are more art, art, uh, uh. artistic ones, like the, whatever you call mm. paintings mm. and carvings. Tankas and and yeah, yeah, exactly those. So but but most of them, a large chunk of both those sites, they ventured into Tibet. That's mm-hmm. a whole different... That's, that's actually where the result of that. This guy and me. Both of you. Yeah. Because our somewhere down the line, one of our grandparents they migrated from Tibet mm-hmm. after the Chinese invasion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So my grandmom and my granddad met in Tibet. So my granddad was a watchmaker. Oh wow. And Damn. Yeah. So yeah. So he used to work in Lhasa, and then I guess he met my grandmom, and then. flew her out of there I mean, your grandma <laughs> broke her watch you know what i'm saying this <laughs> did <laughs> your you grandma <laughs> wanted her batteries repaired you know what i'm saying did you <laughs> your gra- great grandfather was here watchmaker too or no no my grandfather not my just your grandfather yeah, like yeah. this was a yeah it's i mean i won't say fairly recent but it was back in 50s i guess 50s 60s mm-hmm. somewhere no 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 i think around 7 i don't know man 
probably 60s 70s mm. something like that. so there was there was like a flourishing trade between india eh no sorry tibet and uh, nepal back in those days so that's why most of the nepali people they would go there they they had like a whole there still are nepali people in tibet living yeah. in lhasa uh-huh. there's a hu- pretty decent uh, community up there so so they had like a whole um street where they would open up shops mm-hmm. and they would take stuff from here sell it there and a lot of them started going into like craftsmanship and stuff like that and my granddad was one i mean he was a watchmaker not, not exactly a craftsman our no, one of nepal's one of nepal's best architect karn arniko right he w- he traveled from nepal to china and died in china i think no he was the one who you see those chinese stupas and stuff mm-hmm. right like much credit to him because that comes from you uh, not the from nepal yeah the yeah. Nep- nep- the pagodas mm-hmm. yeah, the pagoda mm-hmm. chinese style i don't know exactly how far it's influenced but there so is some kind of so it's coming from here yeah, yeah. interesting solely to that yeah. one architect arniko i think he was pretty well like gratified in china in china yeah they had they have like his statue and stuff statues actually, yeah. and like libraries named after him they're like structures and he was nepali yeah. yeah okay if he was never right oh, sh- i think so i don't know if he had been tibetan you think it would have been the same like would would there have been also a statue of him i mean it would depend how if you submit then yeah. if you submit you, f- uh, you I flourish guess, yeah, yeah i guess if you revolt you <laughs> obviously if you submit Uh, you can submit in a no, very most most tibetans who live in tibet they are, they have submitted mm-hmm. they are flourishing yeah. like they are rich you know what i'm saying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the basic needs are met after a point like surrender like, what are you going to do mm-hmm. like like not everybody wants to burn themselves you know some people mm-hmm. just want to live mm-hmm. so they have to submit and and like i'm not trying to give china any credit and stuff and all but at the same time they have brought some f- form of development to those areas given like i'm sure there is discrimination and stuff mm-hmm. but if you submit like they said you you become part of the society and you know well yeah. and, and also here they they do do like they do roads and stuff right sorry roads china like chi- china yeah There's everybody Chinese do investment every in country Nepal, does right? a lot in Nepal, uh, man. especially in these like hydro electric projects mm-hmm. no they have their own interest too they loan yeah. you the money and stuff Oh. So you get you give them interest or you pay them in the same electricity like they take Chinese it. are so they're so smart. Yeah, India also same thing like right? they're too good. They're very smart. You know uh I think I'm saying this correctly. Uh Portugal sold their water to China. So Portugal does not own their like Whoa. their water anymore. Like I have to check this fact but it, it's I don't know if it's everything or if it's water like bodies. One, Like you, um, like rivers and stuff. No, no, I don't ports, think. You mean could ports? you could you even sell a river? I, I think you mean ports. No, no, no. I mean it's just like uh, land no, with water. water that you drink that comes from the tap. Oh, so like sure. the well, the wells and all these things. What the fuck? I've the never heard of that. China bought it basically. And fresh water. Yeah, Art, fresh water. Like, yeah. Fresh water. What the fuck? Because, uh, and Portugal just is like surrendering themselves. See, I don't know because they want money, you know. I so don't know if you know like China owns a lot of ports around the world. I didn't know that. Like they own Maldives, Sri Lanka. There's so most sp- of smart. Asia. They're They're winning smart. in Asia already. So India is kind of panicking like in that aspect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they they drown you in loans, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they give you the loan in interest rates. They they know they have done the survey fucking you can't pay them back like. <laughs> so they'll willingly give you the loan. So in a way it's their project you are doing. Yeah, of course. So after that you can't pay them loan, so what the fuck? No, you can't even fight them, right? They'll bomb you like. So you have to they yeah. own Yeah, they're smart businessmen, but in like at some point even in Africa, d- dude, this this Chinese oh, infection is like like Chinese loan like loan drowning, debt drowning whatever they call it. It's all the way the way to the African continent. Weren't like. they sending uh Chinese prisoners? In t- into an African Dude, they, they found a they found a secret police station no in China. No. Yeah. In New York. China. What? Bro, they found a secret Chinese police station in the heart of New York. What? <laughs> Look this shit up. I'm not even kidding, man. That's so crazy. Like w- shit. running like well functioning Chinese Gonna police take station. Take over the world. Mm. Take over the in world. In New York, dude. <laughs> 
I think they'll come at tipping and point. We are, yeah. And we are worried out here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that if um, if ants had like consciousness, like a consciousness like humans, that they would really take over the world. <laughs> and to be honest, like Planet of the Apes, Planet of the Ants. The, types. the, <laughs> the Chinese are very business driven. They work a lot. It's kind Calling of like Chinese an ant situation. <laughs> Or am I no, but in a very like, smart yeah, way. Friends, yeah. yeah, in a very smart way. I mean, if you yeah. see it from their perspective, it's just like they're doing it. They're doing well for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? It's just we're the outsiders and we have like a very sucky economy and then all we can do is like, yeah, oh, yeah, like <laughs> that fucking China. That's yeah. all we can do. But at the same time, they're like... D- sorry, they're denouncing dollar or something. Also too, yeah, right? they did. They're, they're doing They're planning that. to. It's not just them, though. We have the BRICS. India, Russia. Uh, also Brazil. India. Bra- Brazil. Uh, what is Brazil doing in this mix? I don't understand, dude. No, <laughs> Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Right now. Yeah, there's the BRICS nation, they call it, no. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention, my friend. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I don't know that. Brazil, India, uh, Russia, China, and if, if, the, if that Saudi happens, then mm. I don't know. S, I don't know what S. If that is. happens, then it'd be a good deal for us, man. Because our currency is pegged with India, no? Yeah. So it'll either go. Or India will be like, fuck you. That's <laughs> that's where we burn boats. <laughs> 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 you guys burn enjoy the, the ride boats. till now? <laughs> burn the time boats. to get off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that reference "burn the boats" comes from? Casablanca. No, no, not Casablanca. Um, like, uh, do you know who I'm talking about? It has to be a pirate thing. Not really. It's a uh, yeah, kind of pirate, but um, it was when the Spanish were Armada. Uh, maybe I don't know the name of the captain. But he was from the Spanish thing. Uh, they came to America or somewhere. And not Columbus, not Columbus. Mm-hmm. Some other did. Uh, and his, uh, what do you call the crew? They, were, they didn't want to attack. Like, they were moral, demoralized or something. So he saw that, and but he, he had to take, fight the natives, right? And they were like re- getting ready to fight on the whatever banks so he ordered when as they landed on the ship i mean on the coast he ordered his men to burn the boats so now to survive they have to fight like oh, fuck. they can't like, i no guess that's back. a good motivation yeah no going back no going back because half of them were like now nah, i'm sure there'll be a retreat call like you know so mm-hmm. we can again jump back to the boats and stuff mm-hmm. right so they were not motivated so yeah, so uh, nowadays they use this reference when, like, you know, there's no looking back, right? They'll say, like, burn the boats. Okay, noted. Noted. I think that's kind of crazy, like, how Europeans came in a boat lo- d- looking to discover the world, get to an island, for example, Australia, huge mm-hmm. island, but island, uh, get to this piece of land and yeah. see natives and be like, this is, a- this is mine. Do you know what I mean? Who were the first to get to Australia? I, mean, I don't British. know. It, British. British. Yeah. Must be. Must be. Yeah. I think it's Columbus. Really? I don't think so. I think oh, no. Columbus is America. No. I think he retired after America. Wait. I think he was too tired after America. <laughs> like, fuck. I'm making another. Th- no. I gotta do this, bro. Like, how many, <laughs> how many things I gotta discover <laughs> for you guys? I think it's Copernicus, dude. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, you find out that it's not even Columbus who was the first European. Hey guys, I said copper so nickel. Say, guys, don't like. <laughs> in, it sounds close to some other word, but uh, <laughs> a Dutch explorer, apparently. The Dutch, the Dutch were pretty. Yeah. Pretty strict eh, back then. Dutch, um, uh, Dutch could be naval. It's not a big Navy country, also. Ni they were pretty active across the world. The Christopher Columbus fucker wanted to come to Goa, actually. India somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but who he came who came to Goa? Uh, no, he, Francis he, Xavier. Oh. He but he ended up in America. America. And he was like no, this is India. 
These are Indians. <laughs> like going to Goa this uh, last week. Oh yeah, how was it? Sorry, I meant to. It ask, was super yeah. interesting to like because I was asking questions, you know, and it's it's very interesting to see churches and to see a very like Portuguese style architecture. Did, did, that is. Did, was it something to what I said? It would be. I told you briefly about Goa at my place. You remember? I, had, I forgot. You guys were asking about Goa and stuff, so I. You, you said it was chilled, probably. Yeah. Uh, it was chilled. No, but the thing is, like, it was interesting to see how like this portuguese architecture completely merged with this indian architecture to create mm. you know this completely different thing and it's really like I, and i was asking questions of like so were the portuguese good here like you know what <laughs> happened and they you know the the taxi drivers said they were good they did good here that i asked about like Christians and Hindus, so did they live, did they coexist in peace? Yes, we all coexisted in peace. And then I was kind of asking about, like, are there, are there children that came out of, of this? Mixed babies. Are there mixed babies? They said no, that there were no mixed babies at all, that, there that, are that there were a lot of, like, separation. Like apartheid? N not apartheid, but that Portuguese didn't, I mean, there, were, there was a lot of discrimination back in the day. Uh -huh. There was a lot of discrimination. People were yeah. getting shot and hanged in the middle of the town. And, and how do these taxi drivers tell me that it was super they just peaceful the whole time? They want, you, they want you to tip them, like, excel, <laughs> like, because they don't want to give you horrific stories, you know what I'm saying? Like, they want to keep you in a good mood, like... I mean, if you're invading yeah. some place... No, seriously, that's what yeah, it is. But that's kind of shit, you know? I, I mean, like, like, when I ask a question, I want to know the reality. Yeah, I'll yeah. tip you if you're honest with me, well, you know? Maybe you tip them first to give you the right <laughs> answer, dude. <laughs> 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 I guess. But yeah, but there's, there's a lot of discrimination a back lot. in the day. When I, was just, when I was in Goa the last time, I saw... I went to a museum that was... There was full, like, anyone speaking against the Portuguese uh, governance and the police would just come to their home, drag them out, beat them, and hang them in the middle of... Fuck. This I mean, like, when against you're, when Christianity. You're, yeah. I don't know. Because, like, you're Portuguese. invading a country, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, like, the Indians would hand them over, like, very easily. And, like, yeah, they wouldn't, course. like, you know. So but it's so funny. The whole country was with the British... This one fucking state, right? The small, yeah. tiny, like, North and South Goa, like, Portuguese, right? If I was the British, I would invade at night and kick the Portuguese out, like... I think understanding the Allah. Yeah, you guys keep the rest of India, we'll just take this part. Yeah, fuck, that's really crazy. That's not the... I asked so many people, you know, and no one gave me an answer. Everyone was like... I think it's just lost in No, I'm history, sure they yeah. also know that this lady has already Googled stuff, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what is she asking me for? Oh, they, I, I mean, they, a lot of stuff probably got lost. Go on sausages are one of my favorite ones, man, to eat. Fucking hell. That's a very Portuguese thing, you know, like well, sausages. Yeah, go on sausages. I love uh, go on vin uh, pork vindaloos. The go on food, right? Mm. Okay, um, I, I love it. But right now, go on, like after the Portuguese, it's the Russians. Yeah, it's the Ruskies. It's a Russian Ruskies. invasion yeah. in, Ruskies in Goa, hundred percent. Uh, From that, Vasco that to Vladimir. Thing also. Like there's posters. <laughs> there's like this whole spiritual vibe happening in Vasco Goa. Vasco to Vasily. <laughs> And all the like this whole spiritual vibe and all these like posters for workshops and all these things, it's all in written in Russian. It's yeah. not even in English anymore. Like they yeah. don't even give a shit anymore. It's like for Russians, you know. Excuse me. It's just rampant right now. It was it was interesting to go there and like like coming back to this whole mm. spirituality thing to see how like people like we have to kind of escape our mm -hmm. own reality to yeah. come to the east to understand like to have a more holistic idea of ourselves you know because in our countries and in our homes there is no holistic doesn't exist what do you mean by holistic holistic seeing seeing the body and the human as a whole system do you think people do it over here a hundred percent you have ayurveda you have buddhism you have hinduism you're yeah, part but that's of that's like a very small group of people who do that you, know? you think so yeah I, I mean the generations now they are so out of touch i think you probably know more than yeah, them yeah i guess because like the whole tiktok generation i guess yeah. so but like in a in a cultural and and art like or 
in in your origin yeah. you you see things holistically mm. when we don't like we we were there was paganism mm -hmm. so pre-christianity was paganism and it was also a lot to do with like living with nature and you know yeah. maybe for sure more holistic but and isn't like big paganism like kind of like a condescending word is it is is it like a down i don't think so is it i don't no. know i mean it, like i think i have maybe i had the wrong idea about it but i thought it was given to describe someone who is sort of like uncivilized oh no 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 no, oh, I I, no. Okay. paganism is uh pre-christianity it's uh i should really know more about it but it's like living with nature it's mm. more like a more of like the witchy vibe you know like oh. uh vikings were were pagan it's more like working with animals and you know like gods are animals also i think so it's more with nature and then christianity came and um brought some morality and brought the one god one you know one system one even thing. they even bought like what would you call mon monogamy what do you call monogamy yeah, yeah because monogamy like how how is here in terms of monogamy in in paper in paper yeah and in reality i mean i, I don't know dude. historically <laughs> historically pretty conservative man no no you know, oh, you know like know, if if you go back like two generations like even oh, yeah, in my yeah, family yeah, yeah. like they have so, yeah two generations people like, like yeah. my like great granddad or my great grand uncle he had two wives three wives and had like a bunch of children and they knew about each other yeah, yeah. they lived yeah. in the same household oh they helped each other they're like best friends yeah that's crazy <laughs> playmates yeah sharing responsibilities and like it was it's that weird that Backbite. like right mm -hmm. after, like <laughs> within one generation that just entirely shifted yeah. to being something immoral you know yeah but slowly there's the whole polyamorous movement happening what's that polyamory when you like when you can be with more, more with, with more than one person um where you can be in a relationship with more so we that's happening yeah of where? course in new new age spirituality circles there's a lot of polyamory happening there's this one book i didn't read it that's like an orgy man. that's like wild becoming wild country polysecure. <laughs> no sorry uh, uh, this book called becoming polysecure mm -hmm. and i guess it's yes it is orgy in in a way but it's yeah. more of like coming to an understanding that we humans are maybe not not made to be just with one person how can you how can you like give your whole soul and promise your soul until your death to one person who what came if, up with that stuff uh, i think it's just one one person trying to look for excuses <laughs> like, oh, man well, i can't do this shit <laughs> well, what, you know what Amory. let's start a movement <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> call it a fucking movement polyamory already like. existed before before monogamy like people were polyamorous they were in a like in villages people were polyamorous they had yeah. more than one mm. wife that's polyamory like living living in community all together that mm -hmm. already existed and then i don't know if it's christianity that brought monogamy i think it's christianity yeah and making it seem bad that you share love yeah. because in the end if you really think about it it's like i think they basically they were trying to say like don't be sleeping with your neighbor's wife like basically. yeah that's kind of weird like yeah. no. if you sleep with a neighbor's wife like no that's disrespectful but yeah. a polyamory is about consent and it's about Oh. we're together for example and we know that th like we have a respectful and we have a like a consensus that we we three are together and that we can be with other people if we want to but yeah. it's a lot of but to do with that communication that goes against uh, our human dna and does it though like what do you call innate values no like we are territorial beings aren't we you yes. like and obviously when you, whom you are like with like you see them in a way like that they're your territory types so yeah that i don't know that's kind of new to me yeah and, and again sorry we're we are here today because people fought for the territory and yeah. what they what they think belongs to them right people still fight for stuff like sorry so yeah so this kind of i don't understand but with territory comes jealousy and and pre like before of course communities they they were together and they would 
create their own territory but within the community that it's shared territory you know and there's sharing and there's this kind of abundant love and shared commitment and shared responsibility so you're just making a bigger circle yeah making a bit bigger circle like but guess. then wouldn't that bring up the question that we talked about earlier like we need structure you know? and in a polyamorous what community there's there no is structure there there i'm guys i don't i don't i'm not polyamorous i don't know <laughs> no, I, but, I thought you uh, read that book no i didn't so. i didn't read the book but that, um, would, that would that would seem chaotic like you don't know whose kid it is uh you do because with polyamory the most important thing is communication so you're always talking <laughs> about option. it you know you're like i'm like imagine we're together but i want to be with him you know what's up I, w- <laughs> i would come to you <laughs> i would come to you what's and talk up about like <laughs> Like it's a lot about consent <laughs> and going back to going beyond jealousy and going into acceptance and sharing and understanding that love can be not just placed onto you and not onto just one person, but it can be placed onto other people. Like how many people cheat? How many people like like more than one person at the same time? Mm. Like that's like being monogamous is against their nature. Maybe some people are monogamous and others aren't. I don't know. I don't know enough about mm. it. Oh my love, how did you and Art meet? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> monogamy here. Yeah, monogamy. Uh so I w- I came to live in the monastery. And uh so you guys met here? Yeah, we met here. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't the art was in the monastery like no 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 it was uh, after the monastery so we'll eat pray eat give eat love pray eat pray love, eat, pray, love <laughs> thing <laughs> not at all i wish you that eat, you ate then you were like praying then you found like, you i know, wish it would have it, it was mm. that romanticized the whole like monastery experience but no it wasn't a neat pray love um but we met cuz his one of his best friends was in school with me mm. in portugal so um So then when I came here he told Talk us of to the meet. devil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we met and right, and <laughs> <laughs> and then I never left basically. The I never left Nepal. Oh, okay. Yeah, cuz I met him. Uh, interesting. You came into the picture. Sorry. What's sir. up, man? I <laughs> hear. So you didn't meet him while you were praying. <laughs> no, I wasn't praying. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um Yeah, what were we talking about, man? I think we're talking about monogamy. Oh yeah, yeah, monogamy. So wh- what new age uh, like, I didn't understand that part. Like in this in these like spiritual circles of like westerners trying to, you know, find themselves. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Like there's like there I don't know I don't know where I fall in this but there's this new new wave spirituality of like there's a lot of cacao ceremonies there's a lot of like people doing uh, plant medicine or people doing a lot of um psychedelics and you know there's they do a lot of gatherings I guess in a way they're just trying to be free and trying to like live off the grid a lot of people in portugal are moving to portugal to live off the grid and to not like to be free i guess people just want to be free you know and i guess this polyamorous movement comes in into that feeling of people just want to be free they don't want to be restricted but then in the sa- at the same time it's what we were talking about structure is there structure in these polyamorous relationships i don't know Probably i don't know not. enough about it And yeah uh, so uh, psychedelics are legal in Portugal. They are decriminalized. What does that mean? That means that you can carry up to a certain amount of drugs on you, but uh if you are caught you are not taken to prison mm-hmm. because you're given a scolding. <laughs> no, you're they kind of they take you to uh to a police station and if they see that you know maybe you have psychological issues they'll they'll book you oh. a um psychologist mm-hmm. meeting um obviously if you have a lot on you you're you'd Judge. be dealing so yeah. that's a different level are But you dealing or just selling selling i mean so why is you, that you, you can't sell you can so only have it for yourself how do you buy it? 
the shops no 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 oh no no they're not shops so you still have to go to dealers but you have yeah, to be a good hider then <laughs> yeah you still have to be go to a dealer oh. but it's just all of this happened because in Portugal at some point there was a huge crack cocaine issue mm. and through that uh HIV was increasing too mm. because people were sharing syringes and stuff mm. so Portugal took the step to instead of putting everyone in prison because they have issues mm. they are coming back for drugs in port like prisons are getting uh Better. like fuller and fuller HIV is increasing what can be done So, so they decriminalized it so people would be helped emotionally rather than being secluded in prison like it happens or it happened in the US for a long time, for example. Has that helped? Uh, yeah, of course. It helped a lot. Like crack cocaine issue really decreased. HIV decreased because there would be clinics. They're like sometimes you still see like um, vans around Lisbon and it's vans to like they give injections or they help I don't know what they do in there but it's like with clean clean apparatus and everything and that really helped people because if they need psychological help they'll get it they're not taken to prison and just you know yeah. I don't know what happens mm. so out here it's, it's kind of the opposite here yeah if you're caught then you're the chetan vlogs type yeah. depends if, like, if you're caught smoking no like hard stuff yeah like opioids and stuff like brown sugar and it's just here a lot of, of things sugar. depends on like uh, the person uh, brown sugar is the cheapest form of heroin oh you know, like a know poor man's heroin and mm. and a lot of people do this uh glue thing no not then, a lot the, the kids on the streets yeah oh. the that's not the cheap high mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I, have you tried that have you tried that no <laughs> one yeah, of us has yeah, one, <laughs> apparently uh, yeah. back in school just uh just to fuck around with friends yeah i tried mm-hmm. once uh, glue stuff you put it in a polythene and you just like to blow keep blowing and like breathing the same air again and again and, and how again. does that feel you're like fucked up for, uh, like, bang, like you feel like there's a motor like helicopter or something hovering around your head and you can't move do you halluc- hallucinate I don't think you have No, you don't have just days. You just days like knocked mm. out. Uh, so <laughs> you reach like a hole basically. Mm. But a very noisy hole. I don't know where that noise comes from, bro. That Does no- everyone hear that noise or that was just you? I think a lot of people hear that noise, but not everyone. Yeah. But it's not good. I'm not saying it's good. But so. you have a big drug problem here? Kind of. I think a lot of it is underreported. Mhm. But especially the people on the street if there are a lot of people on the streets that means mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who are dealing with those problems so uh, i mean there are people who help it and us the like uh we had a guest on so he was telling us about how there are rehabilitation centers that provide you like legally sanctioned doses mm-hmm. to people who are trying to you know like mm-hmm. get off mm-hmm. but then again like i said everything over here is very the rules are very blanketed you know so there's no room for how would you call it, like class a class b yeah. drugs mm-hmm. like do you think no, like, yeah. do you think nepal would open their market again to to sure. sell cannabis and maybe i think like especially after thailand no i, I think but it depends how cool india would be with it too yeah but w- why does it seem like in is india like making this for you or i what? think in my opinion it's solely based on how if india will let us or not what do you mean india they will have a joke hold on us no because all the weed right it goes from here to sell into india on the if it's legal oh, right oh. it'll multiply oh right so they are affected even previously all this uh, hash and all from the western side of still till date just under the table right Yeah, but still it happens if it was above the table you wouldn't necessarily have to go through india you no we they don't even want uh, it to come like mm-hmm. let alone under the table or over the mm-hmm. table they don't want hash mm-hmm. entering india through nepal another thing is we need to ship it through india we don't have ports no? so we have to yeah. go through them yeah it would be flight so and like flight is back in 2015 that was the year of the earthquake so something like that happened they they just like blocked all the borders And we didn't have fuel for months. What during the earthquake? Yeah. Why Post did they block earthquake. it? Post earthquake. Why? 
politics politics yeah like trying to show who's got a trying bigger muscle, piece man, political it. muscle that's crazy that's been happening for quite I some time i think especially after india got a lot of power and like our other other neighbor is not like very like yeah. We don't have the best of neighbors, man. <laughs> yeah, they're like, fucking. Yeah. But you guys you should read the Bible, man. <laughs> fucking be good to your neighbors, son. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, dude, what the fuck? No, but you you do have like in Buddhism, for example, it's a lot about compassion and kindness. Yeah, on paper, like, but at the end, we're all humans. We have the same instincts, dude. Buddhism or no Buddhism, dude, like. Yeah, I felt that a lot when I like yeah. I felt that a lot. Like Buddhism no, it just romanticized I feel like whatever like You yeah. know that's exactly that's exactly the word that I use when I say like when I came here from the monast uh, like to the monastery it's like we romanticize it so much on the other side of the world and you were saying this exotic feeling, no? Like there's this roman romanticization that like I don't know it's going to be perfect or it's going to you be very good. Zen and yeah, zen. Yeah, exactly and everyone is super zen, but in the end it's humans and when there's humans involved, there's shit involved. Like we all have our own obstacles regardless if we're priests or monks or, you know. What's up, Rex? <laughs> <laughs> the audience is yeah. growing. You want some strawberry wine? Wine. Good. <laughs> That's the last of it. Continue. <coughs> um, Kira, what do you see? Humans are fuckers, like they yeah, that we romanticize a lot. Yeah. But when there's humans involved, there's shit involved. Like we all have our own obstacles, and there's a so lot. So basically, you're <laughs> you're disappointed with the Buddhist experience you had. <laughs> I'm. <sighs> I mean that size said enough dude like you don't have to say anything <laughs> I'm else, disappointed yeah. with the uh, the structure but in the end it's re- a religious structure and any religious structure there's hierarchies and there's there's a lot of money involved and there's a lot of things involved that that like kind of there's all this structure and then there's the nectar of Buddhism and the philosophy that is beautiful but then how is that practiced and how how does that come onto the structure you know I don't know I didn't live there enough to 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 talk about that but Dude, what's your take on that <laughs> zulness ah <Huh? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> this is where we fucking are on the same page every single time then uh is <laughs> that lama trying to like suck a tongue or something like that dude i saw it yeah and i was asking the age like what he thinks about it or if did he did he actually say it i think he's so. no he said it oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. but he didn't suck on like obviously he didn't suck on the tongue but he did say it but there's like different takes on it right yeah like you said no there's no privacy over here. <laughs> so you know people are not very <laughs> but but did you feel like I mean, that was i mean tongue is a little too much but still but did you feel like that was genuine that he actually wanted the child to suck on his tongue or was that a teaching i think it teaching, was i don't think that <laughs> was a, i don't know what kind of teaching that was like i don't think that was teaching i think he was just joking around mm-hmm. otherwise to i mean like how people are trying to portray it like he's some pedophile or something like that mm-hmm. if he had to do that he wouldn't do that in like a sermon or a public like yeah. place you know so i think he uh, maybe he needs some boundaries but i don't think it was in bad intention you know and yeah. i don't think people need you to blow this up as much as it did especially from like i understand like people from the Tibetan community they felt hurt or like whatever but the more you say like you know like don't uh, well, people are trying to cancel the lama and all that shit the more you post about it the more people are aware about it mm-hmm. the more people are going to watch him like actually say like suck my tongue so i was like guys like stop posting it you know i don't think a person that, like a pedophile would not actually ask someone in public in front of so many like in front of the whole world to suck yeah. their tongue in a real manner right like yeah it's, it's probably just someone who just came. and that that this video was like really, actually it's a video from early earlier this year it just went viral right now oh i didn't know that so like social media algorithms and all situation <laughs> and probably just some page like finding it clipping it and posting it and then people are like triggered 
and then there's other yeah. side who's trying to be defensive but while being defensive you're even like you're making it even bigger you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so like these but, things are hard because like um because it could be true right but mm-hmm. like any like any it's any yeah. possibility could be true and a lot of like figures like priests and and people in power like we were talking about power do use their position of power to be pedophiles and to like they use their position of power to like oh yeah this is a teaching this is like a buddhist teaching or a christian teaching or whatever and they lure people in gurus also do the same right they lure people in yeah. like believing that they're going to help them attain enlightenment or this or that and then in the end it's just using yeah there is that side to it too like recently to nepali comment ko video this guy so there was this guy called the young buddha or uh new buddha something yeah. like that you know so this guy what ki something his name was something something bombson <laughs> yeah. huh yeah. ram yeah ram something ram badur ram badur badur tha and all like he Just was ram in the jungle okay. fucking so this guy he <laughs> was <laughs> so he had a similar story arc to buddha mm-hmm. uh, besides the renouncing thing obviously he's not, he was not a prince he was from rags so rags went, to rags yeah so he went like meditating and mm-hmm. then disappeared for months and then people slowly started noticing him and he just like he had a good pr team fucking like, he had a good pr it was all a, all a setup like i think his brother his brother one of his brother was a smart brain like this guy was just a face of it okay so the brother told this guy go fucking into the jungle mm-hmm. and meditate act like you are meditating during the day and yeah. uh, i will go tell the news crew and i'll bring the news crew you just play the buddha types so he looked the part like all raggedy hair and clothes and stuff just meditating and becoming like a media storm be- this this happened like 10 15 years ago really yeah it's crazy shit so like it became like a media storm so people caught up to it and this is like way before the social media like mm-hmm. i think 20 years ago if i'm not mistaken i don't know exactly the date but recently when tv tv was the biggest and, uh, source and I then think. what did th- what did he do so he, he became a living god like people started making that place of worship you know mm. Mm. so they started barricading his place of meditation he's there inside somewhere uh, god knows what's happening inside he might be eating sleeping like you yeah. can't go you can't see but he, they say he's meditating kind of seems cultish doesn't it it is yeah. not kind of it is literally <laughs> a cult because after that like uh his brother was like puppeting the move like every strategically like every move so after that he the local politicians wanted that rub of that popularity mm-hmm. you know so they started giving him money and feeding him with power bring him to the politics mm-hmm. and he's one day he suddenly got up saying like now i'm enlightened <laughs> like that's that's so crazy bro <laughs> saying like now i don't need to meditate anymore now i'm ready to enter the and preach and be part of the politics yeah. and stuff and yeah that's what we were talking about at the beginning it's like telling and like telling people that you have attained like how this. crooked this story gets is after that uh he, a bunch of uh western ladies started flocking towards his like the new buddha mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm. right of course so they were part of his cult and his teachings were like buddha but he started his own separate sect of buddhism they were blue robes like not like the maroon one oh like interesting full blue robes right and then now he's part of the government and stuff too then like he exists still like he's still no, he's at large no he's is at large now Huh? He's at large. Right? He's on the run, dude. Yeah, like saying like he's uh, this is his second big meditation time. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> so, what happened was they got caught with like he started beating the foreigner ladies. Just beating or raping? I think both. Oh. I think his ego just blew up, you know. Yeah. After like no, no, getting apparently all I think they didn't say in that uh, text and the video I saw they, they didn't mention like sexually. There, there was there, there was, was yeah, there was. Months. But she the was, one she was I got to a tree for like a couple of months. What yeah. the yeah. months? Yeah, she has. Yeah. That the that I think part. she has an organization right now that is like continuously trying to catch him. Yeah. 
he's, he's on the run right now. That's the same. Did you see the the Netflix thing called Bikram? Yeah. Did the, you the watch yoga it? Guy. Yeah, the yoga yeah. guy. Bikram Yoga. It? I watched that Wild Wild Country. I watched Wild Wild mm-hmm. Country. That's another good one. That's, that's about Osho. One. Is it the same? Oh, no, 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 that's about Osho. Yeah, but it's like it, it's this same. Bikram <laughs> guy came from <laughs> India and <laughs> went to the US and said that he invented this specific type of yoga when yeah. it wasn't true. And then he was just like raping raping all these women that oh, were yeah. like sexually assaulting and I think he had some like teaching program that he would like bring them into or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they would be all in like a big room and it was really hot, like super, super yeah. hot. And, and he would have a fan like behind him and everyone else would be suffering and he's like, This is a teaching or this is like part of your yoga practice. <laughs> Fuck I mean, power I man become the yoga that wild wild country was enough man i can't do any more of that fucking quality shit. Now, indian people are good salesmen they are they, they are super anything. good There's especially spirituality and religion so they know how, how they is know how, how is mr uh, sadguru different from this because time and again we see the same pattern for repeating right and like like people like sheep fucking they flock to any to be honest shit. with you like Okay, he has he's interesting. You watch his videos. He is, you know, he does say interesting things. He does know his shit. No, but he's saying the but same shit someone already has said it yes. like before and he just But for re- me it's a bit culty. I like for me it's yeah. a bit culty. I, that's what I'm saying like these people are good uh, salesmen. Yeah. yeah. Because you see Sadhguru now, he's trying to appeal to the millennials and stuff. Mm. That's why he's doing all these safe like, soil and yeah, stuff. safe soil and these like road, road bike tours, tours, bike tours, and all these like he's like doing like adventure stuff and like that. Because that's he knows like yeah, maybe I, like they'll relate to me in that way. Yeah, but like I think that. it became like I think the moment it becomes too big, you know, you you have too much power. Like the, I don't know. I'm watching his videos and he's interesting, but there's something at the back that makes me. <laughs> no, I don't know. I feel the same. Uh, I was in um, <laughs> I was in the <laughs> farmers market. This South was the first year yeah. that I was here, farmers market, and there was the this the, like, I, I was like kind of dressed like this, a bit like hippie-ish vibe, whatever. They picked up on me. I don't know. And there's this uh, white uh, German girl, and she starts talking to me, and she has this like um, sadguru. Uh, I think it's a serpent. I don't know this copper uh, ring. Mm-hmm. I think it's Sadhguru. I'm, um, yeah, I'm sure it is actually. And uh, she starts talking to me, Baba. super sweet. No, no, I think it's Sadhguru. Super sweet um, and starts talking to me, kind of understands that I'm into spirituality. And she's like, oh, we came from a community in India and I'm here with my brother and let me go get him and they're like she goes get his brother her brother and he's like this indian dude and they're both together with the ring and like talking about the ring and i'm just like and and he's like it's not a it's not a cult don't worry and i'm like red flag <laughs> it's the a moment, cult <laughs> the moment you say we're not a cult like and they were, cult. they were trying like i like after i left like they were trying to be with me in the in the farmer's market and i was trying you know to escape be with the people that i was with you know <laughs> And then uh, they got my number. I was like, okay, fine. Like, just keep my number, whatever. And they were like calling me after the market. Like, so where are you? Let me, let us come to you. Let us talk about our community. I'm like, bruh, (laughs) we ain't talking about no community right now. That salesman mentality. Yeah, it's like they come and just come and fetch the hippies, you know? (laughs) If they were like Indian couple, I'm Indian brother, sister, you'd be sold. Like. (laughs) <laughs> they would do a better job like. they would be better at it yeah. but i was like mm, the spike girl with the, i don't know the ring situation i don't know there's these things like they place i don't know people need structure and they're they they want freedom and and they want something different than than what they have at home you know and then they go into these exotic like you were saying exotic structures and believe in everything you, and you can't believe in everything you can't you know just go into a cult and and believe in everything that the people are telling you you know Mm. and i think it's very easy to to be sold in schools of thought that you don't know about you know like if someone's coming from a christian background into a into a hindu or tantric thing whatever and someone tells you like to become enlightened i have to finger you then maybe the person will consider it because their goal is enlightenment Mm. but they you know i don't know there's 
There's just some crazy stories, guys. <laughs> See, crazy I've shit. heard my share of crazy stories yeah. to go along these culty lines. Mubuni <laughs> Gagosuni. I was also uh, almost victim to a cult in my college days. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us <the> story, please. <laughs> and funny story, it was a German lady again mm-hmm. in Bangalore. Uh, we were we sh- had one class, so we had like desk mates in the class, and suddenly it became like I thought she was asking me out to like <laughs> go hang out as like you know go watch a movie or something. I don't know what German people do, man. Like. <laughs> Drink a beer or something. I don't know what they. Why do. German man everywhere? I don't know man. Like I think after Hitler, they, they lost. They tried to get away from their past. They lost I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. So yeah, and this was in Bangalore, and like I'll take you to a spot, and I was like, okay, no questions asked. I don't want to know what spot this is. Really. <laughs> you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe you'll be lucky. I said my Lord's prayer, and I was <laughs> off. Like, and uh, it was. A countryside. I was. We lived in the heart of Bangalore city, and it was a taxi ride, almost I think an hour, somewhere outside the village side. <laughs> and in the middle of a farm, there was a huge mansion type mm-hmm. house, white color. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Purity. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's where the party is. Type <laughs> but fucking, I go in. Everyone is wearing that uh, Indian kurta, no? Like uh. white, white color kurta, full on, top to bottom, dude. I'm like, what the fuck is happening, right? I can't even ask her, like, cause she's like busy acting, busy types. Like, I'm with other new, new. Like, you can tell people who have already been indoctrined into the yeah, yeah, yeah. cult, and couple of new fucking <coughs> goats, like, who've been <laughs> brought to slaughter types. Like, <laughs> I, fe- I felt like that. I swear, and. They're like, okay, come the procession, whatever is gonna start in the hall, okay? And I'm trying to be a good guy. I'm go right up the first seat. I'm gonna go <laughs> sit, see what this is about. Because I wanna give a good impression. I don't know what the fuck, right? <laughs> so I go up, then fucking suddenly hits me that they are trying to talk about our lifestyle and the life choices and uh, mis- misguidance, this and that. And suddenly it hits me like, fucking hell, these guys are trying to, trying to brainwash me. <laughs> Like, you can, what, I can tell. What did you do to not be brainwashed? I dozed off, man. <laughs> I, s- I kept on sleeping. I was so bored. It was like almost two hours sermon type. Oh, I slept. I was the first guy. I can't just get up and fucking leave. You know, like, it's the middle of nowhere. The taxi is gone. The boats have been burned, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if he walks out. Maybe you don't know what the fuck is gonna happening. do to you. You know. So the entire time I just slept. I was the first guy, and I kept on dozing like this right i'm tired right i don't know tired of what and that lady came down kept on like coming in and giving <laughs> me that elbow dig from i'm getting annoyed at this point like how old is she i think she was the elderly lady man think of it right now <laughs> <laughs> like, uh yeah so after that after that thing uh, i somehow survived they asked me to pay money too dude <laughs> that was the most weird part I need to pay them like uh, five G's. I see. I'm like to, for to the lecture or what? <coughs> yeah, for whatever. Just in f- for their presence or mm. the thing they showered on me. Fuck you know. The blessings. And yeah, I didn't have that much money it's a, it's on me. It's an energetic me. exchange. Yeah, so say. and they want money, right? And uh, the fuck, I didn't carry that much money too, and I was kind of embarrassed. I didn't have that much money, right? So I told her, "Pay for me right now. I'll pay you back in college the next day, right?" <laughs> So and I was I was like I need to get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, and there was a couple of there were other guys like me too who had been like a little bit catfished into that mm-hmm. situation. So there was like three, four of us. Now we had this like special group on the side. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, guys, we've been duped, man. Like, fuck these. And they're asking money now and that stuff. And we together Revolution. we we caught a we 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 ordered a taxi together the four of us, <laughs> and on the way back we were like, what the fuck was that man? Thank God types. We all know pyramid scheme. I know it was there was a god types idol there. I've never seen some idol they are praying to incense and stuff and all. The religious yeah some pyramid scheme. whatever fucking hell dude. But then imagine like imagine if you were lost and if you you were looking for some hope. And you get to the you get to this indoctrination kind of thing, mm. and you fall for it because. Let me, let me finish the story, please. Uh, one sec. So, uh, 
I I saw the lady the next couple of days some in the class so I gave her the money whatever mm. like hey fuck you and you're fucking like uh, I didn't say that but my eyes <laughs> did like and um I didn't see her the semester ended our class changed and all so uh fast forward a uh, couple of months later I get a text from her saying like hey where are you and you know, what did you think about that day we went like to that thing would you like to consider coming back again and I'm like fucking you know, like I just ghosted like no fucking way right and then she comes to uh class looking for me my other class we had no business being in the same class just mm-hmm. to ask get feedback trying to like drag me back mm-hmm. and then she's like then we exchange stories and she's like now I'm pregnant and stuff I'm like what the fuck like you're pregnant like with who types no <laughs> and one of With the lord yeah no, no <laughs> she apparently met some indian dude in that that very house and they were like they got together and stuff so i was like thanks like, for taking me mm-hmm. but uh i'm okay being like whatever so that was then after that i'm damn super skeptical about anybody who looks like yeah. sadguru who plays that part like talks big shit like i'm like hey bro like you just wanna Have you been part of those fucking stuff? It's it's weird. I think like it lies in the simplicity, you know, like the moment that you you make it too big and you make it too out there, mm. like you kind of lose a lot, you know. And if you you're simple about it and and you know, spiritual practice is simple, and and people will come to you if they need if you, if they need your guidance, you know. You don't have to do fucking. marketing do you know what i mean that's what saguru does a lot he has a lot of he has a huge marketing situation going for him there's uh i just want to say like normally when i sit and talk spirituality with like people especially foreigners right mm. i can't help myself but roll my eyes sometimes like cuz you know what i'm saying but sure. you're the first one who i like really <laughs> feel like know. okay you you do understand the way i see things yeah, too. so i feel like previously before we sat down mm. today i didn't have much like idea because we didn't talk at this much like almost three hours we've been talking right so now i feel like yeah you you see through the bullshit of all yeah you have but you have stuff, to right? through everything you have to see through the bull- there's so much bullshit you have to really take a step back and evaluate everything that's in front of you and where you're going to learn and where you're going to practice and who are you going to learn from if you want to do that or you know I think there's too much bullshit there. And this new age <coughs> spirituality situation, there mm. is a lot of bullshit too that I'm starting to get allergic, a little bit allergic to, you know, because it's it's too much. But in in the end it's like people trying to to just understand themselves better, but then they fall into the ego trap, which is the opposite of of the spirituality thing. Mm. What was the name of the snake? Ouroboros, Ouroboros. You it? should tattoo it. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that, yeah. like that, guys. No, that's a dagger. Yeah. Can't see. <laughs> <Tattoo> <laughs> <dagger. laughs> What do you mean? No, I mean like tattoo it like that out here, guys. <laughs> Ouroboros, <laughs> Ouroboros. What is that, Paula? Thank you so much, Luke. That was super you, fun, bro. man. Uh, for the insights and making our podcast an international thing. <laughs> <laughs> the first, the first European. The first European on our yeah. podcast. The Portuguese have landed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, the Jesuits. Uh, also, yeah, Rishab. Our we had another guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was three of us normally. Four of us, beside uh, Sanjay. Uh, he has started Gov Gov Pass from uh, where is he? New York. New York. Oh, he's doing it there. Yeah, yeah that's no. dope. I thought he was in Texas, eh? No. Texas, New York. He's okay, pretty. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, so you're that's diversifying. Another, yeah. So oh, nice. we, that's awesome. So, thanks. Thank you for having uh, me. Really. really thanks, Lou. That was fun, man. That was Ladies fun. And time just flew. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Like, didn't give her. Sanjay! Body. Yeah, it's too dope to be the same.